A lot of people ask me about the church, actually ask me, how can you remain a Catholic? Why are you a Catholic? How do you stay, stay in the church all these years, be faithful to it? Well, here's how I look at it. I look at the church as a mirrored reflection of myself. If you looked in the mirror, you would see, what would you see? You'd see moments of grace and goodness and splendor. You'd see wonderful good deeds. You'd see healing and help. You'd see the community of saints uh, in the church. You, you see the saints who have given us such good example, the priests, the sisters, the help that we've received along the way from good, noble people who have been nourished by the church. But you also see, or maybe the invisible dark side isn't immediate ev immediately evident in everybody, but there are dark sides we, where sadness and depression and and sin and failure and uh, people who behave in a way that they would feel is ignoble and not worthy of them. And I feel in myself uh, have overcome uh, sin and darkness and a lot of things due to immaturity, due to the genes we receive, the experience we have early in life. The human side of us, which is so far from perfect, is <laughs> what we carry around. And when we look at the church at large, it's a mirror of that. And so I think it's very important for you in judging the church to be compassionate to the human church, the church which is the embodiment of the sinful people of God. And to, to realize whatever upsets you and makes, drives you away, there are millions of ex-Catholics and lapsed Catholics, millions of them, and they all have very good reason for leaving. I wouldn't chastise anybody for wanting to leave the church because each one has his own or her own particular reactions to things that happen to them at their level of understanding. So, but upon examination, the things that really bug us about the church is the human element. And so I try to maintain a clear distinction between the human element of the church and the divine. So it's absolutely essential that we stay true to the divinity of Christ, of Christ's revelation, and to um, accept the fact that he is the Son of God. He's come to us to bring us light and grace. His divinity is what we need in our weak humanity. So the things like the Eucharist, the presence of Jesus in the bread and the wine, they flow from the divinity of Christ, who himself was God and man, in one hypostatic union, it's called. Holy Holy, holy, we bow before the holiness of the church, knowing full well that it is so thoroughly human. I would say uh, in the, the best that's in us should love the church. It's a gift from God. It's a sacrament of the divine presence. And we should not put it on a pedestal beyond what it deserves. I think you have to win respect and earn respect. Therefore, those who do not earn it shouldn't get it. But the church itself as a body is Christ among us. I'll tell you one last story. St. Joan of Arc was being prepared for death the night before she was burned at the stake. And on the record, the scribes came to take her last words. And she was condemned by a church court to die by fire because she was declared to be a witch, all of which was reversed, you know, subsequently. But her final remarks were these, I love the church. I will always love the church because for me, the church is Jesus Christ. Thanks. God bless.